Hi, I'm Liz Robertson. I'm a pastoral care worker at Greenford Baptist and I want to share with you some of my thoughts um, over the last week. I went for a walk earlier today and um, I walked past an embankment that earlier uh, last month there were hundreds of daffodils and I always enjoy seeing them at that time of year. They herald the end of winter for me and the beginning of spring and I always enjoy driving past and seeing them on that embankment. They've gone now, uh, that season's over and uh, I found myself thinking oh well I didn't get to see much of them this year because of having to stay at home um, and then I thought well I'll see them next year and uh, I thought well you know we take things for granted don't we. Um, yes but I'll see the daffodils again next year um, and very often we need something like this sometimes, not that this this is like anything else we've ever experienced, that makes us think about the things that we do take for granted. Um, that there will be another daffodil season. I'm conscious too that at this time people will be losing loved ones and that they won't have that, oh well, next year. Um, and I think when we think about our priorities and the assumptions and the things we take for granted. This time of uncertainty and um, being in uncharted territory causes you to think, causes me to think about the priorities I have had, uh, the value that I put on things and how I maybe value things differently now. I know I find myself thinking, oh, I wish I'd done such and such before this happened, because now I'm stuck with whatever it is. Um, something around the home, maybe, uh, that I have to uh, put up with. Um, it reminds me of um, a film. It's a Wonderful Life, an old black and white movie. And the main character in it is constantly wishing he could leave his hometown and do something adventurous overseas. Uh, circumstances keep changing for him, uh, so he never eventually actually leaves. Um, but then something happens um, in the story that makes him realise all the things that he used to moan about, the things that he used to get frustrated with, that he wished he hadn't had in his life. They'd all gone and he finds himself longing for them. He finds himself wishing that they were back in his life because they were his um, security, I suppose, and his sense of this is who I am. And for us who follow Christ, our security and our identity uh, really need to be um, found in Christ. And I think when times like in, in, in time like this, we are challenged again to see where our security lie, lies and where our, our trust is is uh, whether it's in God or in other things. Uh, I don't want to come out of this time um, regretting not doing things. Like I said, there are maybe things that we wish we had done before this lockdown has happened uh, because our, our, our movements are restricted. What we're able to do now is restricted. I can't see people and friends and you know, there are people that I think, oh, I wish I'd, I, I kept intending to contact them. I kept in contact. Uh, intending to make contact and arrange to meet up well I can't do that now that's been taken away from me and I don't want to at the end of what some people are calling a divine pause in life I know it's not a pause for some of us some of us are rushed off our feet because we're key workers but for a lot of us it is a it is a time of waiting a time of pausing and I for one don't want to come out at the end of this thinking oh I wish I'd done that while this time of pausing while this time of being able to do things that ordinarily I didn't have the time for I don't want to regret missing this opportunity particularly spending time with God reading his word finding him in the everyday So this time has made me reevaluate what I think is important. 
what I value, why I value it. And where my security is. The song Waymaker has a couple of lines in there which say, even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. And I think that's very true for now. There's lots of speculation about what God is doing in this time. But we have that assurance that he is at work. I'm sure we all have had struggles in the past, difficult times, and we've wondered where God is. And we can look back on those times and remind ourselves that even when we were struggling and we couldn't see or hear or feel him, he was at work and we have seen it resolved. And that's true for now also, that we can trust him. That he is there for us. I believe God gave me a picture and it was of a, a hand being extended toward me and I believe that was his hand reaching out. And I want to encourage you just in this next moment in your mind's eye, you might want to close your eyes, imagine that hand being extended to you. And now imagine taking hold of his hand in yours. How does that feel? Soft, but full of strength. Caring, but full of authority. We are secure as he holds our hand. Perhaps reading some scripture that talk about the strong right hand of God might be something that you'd like to do in the next while and to meditate on what it is to know the strong right hand of God holding yours. I'm going to read two scriptures from Psalms. The first one is Psalm 16 Sorry, the first one is Psalm 63, verse 8. With passion I pursue and cling to you. Because I feel your grip on my life, I keep my soul close to your heart. Psalm 16, verse 8. Because you are close to me and always available, my confidence will never be shaken, for I experience your wraparound presence every moment. My heart and soul explode with joy, full of glory, even my body will rest confident and secure. For you will not abandon me to the realm of death, 
nor will you allow your Holy One to experience corruption. For you bring me a continual revelation of resurrection life, the path to the bliss that brings me face to face with you. Both those reason, readings were taken from the Passion Translation. And I love that ending about being face to face with God, because I believe that is what he is asking and wanting for us to experience with him at this time, to be face to face with him. I'm going to end by praying a verse from Romans, Romans chapter 15, verse 13. And I'm going to pray this over you. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with uncontainable joy and perfect peace because you trust him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.